as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomenon. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. That's my creepy voice. I thought it was, I was just slowing down because we've got silent. <laughs> whisper, whisper, whisper. Um, oh, no, nah, that's, nah, nah, that's the creepy one. Whisper, 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 <laughs> whisper, whisper, whisper. Anywho, uh, now that we're done bullshitting, uh, I have with me as part of the quad, uh, quadruple uh, team, I have David German. <laughs> hey, hi, everybody. Or, Rob, Cinema Drunkie, and Takora. Hello out there in podcast land. Perfect. He's not the fluffer you're looking for. <laughs> and then I have Daniel Ryan, also known as the Nightmare Nerd. He'll... Greetings, my fellow horror fanatics. He'll eat your steak. You can keep the burgers because they're gross. <laughs> How dare you hate burgers? I like burgers. I'm just saying whatever is serving your burgers, they did a bad job. So you're like, just give me the steak and get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Anywho, Phil jokes aside, I just thought, how about we just take on just some underrated zombie movies that deserve just more talking about because we're just on this show. We just explore any kind of just cult show stuff that's just underrated. Right, right. Uh, depends on your definition of underrated. <laughs> By underrated, I don't mean even necessarily that it's the best of the year movie. I just mean just like the, this this has cult movie written all over it. It's a love letter to the genre. It's so bad, it's good, and you should watch it anyway, even though it's absolute garbage. It's just so much fun. Um, and I, I fear that we might even have some of the same picks, but that's okay. Well, my, mine is not actually a movie. It's an episode of a TV show, but... Uh... Oh, if that's well, permissible. Please. I mean, movies, TV, director video, TV episodes. Oh, baby. TV, TV, TV sketches, that's fine. Have I got one for you? It's, it sounds like I'm repeating on uh, David's line. So no, no. Who goes first? All right. Uh, well. Draw straws. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not gonna play spin the bottle or Russian roulette. I'm just gonna give it to David. <laughs> oh really? Okay. okay. So my first pick is 1980s The Children. Have you guys seen this one? Why does that sound familiar? It does yeah, sound good to me. Yeah. A the Children. <laughs> a, a school bus full of children drive through a radioactive cloud. Oh my and, god! And they become like these radioactive child zombies when they and when they touch. Any uh, person they like, the person kind of burns up and shrivels. Anyway, I just all I remember about this movie was the trailer, and then I went. I think I talked my sister into taking me to see it in the theater. And it's, I it's, have it's, seen it's, this. It's, oh my god! They, yes. And the kid and the children have black fingernails. Is that I remember that from it. They all, the, that's how you can tell that the children have been turned. They have these black fingernails. Zombified. Was this and part not, of Warner Brothers After Dark series, or was it a separate entity? I'm look. I'm looking at my notes here. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm but yeah, uh, I either saw this on Children Network or YouTube. But I recall it being pretty interesting. Just not, not great, great, but worth a watch for genre it fans. It came but... out. It came out right after Three Mile, the Three Mile Island scene. I think that's what inspired it. 
And the and one of the interesting trivia notes I have about it is it was it came out the same year as the original Friday the Thirteenth, and it has the same composer. So if you listen, if you watch it, the music is very similar. Huh. And uh, I, I remember I just remembered the trailer, and so we went and saw it. I think my sister took me to see it, and it's it's not great, but I remember being very creepy. Very cool. So, so I'm not sure if they're technically zombies. They're sort of zombified radioactive kids. I'm not. I, I there's a there's a similar movie like that that came out also in 08 although it was way more like village of the dam or the bad seed as opposed to what you're describing which is definitely not a living dead uh crazies type storyline uh but no that's cool i i've actually seen uh, i i think i i'm due for a rewatch so good good job the bad point. you mentioned the bad seed that's that's a that's a freaky movie yes it is it's yeah, that's like, got some disturbing uh, imagery in it, yeah. It's like, this can't be real, <laughs> but it is. But that's my first pick. Yeah, that's what I guess my number one right now. For sure. Uh, Daniel? Well, like I said, mine's a TV episode of a very obscure show, and let me know if you guys have heard of this one. The show is called Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, <laughs> we are definitely going back yes. to Hulk Hogan again. <laughs> oh, he's brought plenty of times when it comes to cult to movies and TV shows. Um, you know, me being a rest wrestling fan, uh, I remember watching Rats. the show as a, as a wee one, and uh, I remember this minute because my parents were in the in their living room with me, laughing their asses off. <laughs> uh, the episode I had to look it up here, do my research, is called Strange Brew. <laughs> Because yes. uh, Brew was the name of uh, Hulk Hogan's co-star, played by uh, Christopher Lemon, Jack Lemon's son. Yep. Now, as, I, as I can recall, the plot of the episode, they're busting up some kind of drug ring or something with their talking boat, a la Hasselhoff from Knight Rider. <laughs> but, um, but the drug ring is run by a voodoo witch doctor who claims he has an army of zombies, but it turns out it's guys that he hit up with some kind of drug that makes them think they're zombies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the, scene, the, the, the main reason that this sticks out so clearly in my memory was a scene where Hulk Hogan and Christopher Lemon are fighting zombified guys under the water, and it is so friggin' blatantly someone's swimming pool with some fake, you know, like sand or coral or whatnot strewn on the bottom of it. And these Jesus two zombified Christ. guys, they're wearing Hawaiian shirts with Afro haircuts, and they've got eyes like someone just dropped a bowling ball in their foot, like bugging out uncontrollably. <laughs> and my mom and dad are sitting there watching me with this, and the two of them I thought were going to wet their pants. They were laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, now i got to see it. It's one of those shows, it's like, yep, you know what you're in for. Uh, it, it makes a difference if you got people with a sense of humor watching and, it with you. And, and too too many shots of Hulk Hogan running around the speedo. Yeah. yeah. You said you said you know what you're in for. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I lied. <laughs> I, 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 and Patrick Patrick Mcnee was in that episode from the Avengers. Yeah. Oh God. Wow. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Wow. That is that is. A, he went I far. I think he had a recurring character actually. Yeah, he, he was the uh, yeah he was the uh, the the father-in-law. Oh, Something wow. like that. Yeah, the, the, the How evil have I never heard of this show. I've it, never heard of this show because it, it is stupid. <laughs> I think yeah, it's, yeah. It also was just very poorly scheduled, which is also why it's weird how these shows got syndicated so much overseas, and yet people in the states you think they would know what to do with it because I mean after all they distributed Walker Texas Ranger, but <laughs> there's some stuff where. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, let's just let it die a slow death. It's just for airtime. You, you, you asked for cult. I gave you cult. That's cult, cult, cult. <laughs> With a capital C. Oh, shit. I'm going to let the cinema drunk tackle all. Um, My pick is, um, I guess, technically, they're not uh, zombies, uh, uh, according to the title, but the uh, they're, they're everything zombie like, you know, and they're everything but name. But um, I'm going with Chud too, Bud the Chud. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah. Chuds are close yes. enough. Close enough. Yeah. 
especially especially in this one they're 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 basically zombies like it seems like this was written as like a like almost like a sequel to return of the living dead that uh, they didn't use and this like oh let's just uh, <laughs> use it for something else they might yeah, like, be i think one of the trauma guys involved with the dit was like best buds with either the plan nine from outer space guys or romero and that met at a convention and been like hey what, what were you thinking of doing here's my fan film idea <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah but um i uh, like a lot a lot of people don't uh like like really dig this movie and i don't know why like it's a perfectly fine zombie comedy like you got brian robbins in there doing his uh head of the class shtick and uh, uh I, i've only seen the first one so i better study up for the second one Nah, nah, it's it's great uh you got gary graham playing uh uh bud but, Gary uh, Graham is a total chameleon, especially when you look at his resume. This fucker was on Raven of all fucking movies, shows. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, and he, I think the reason I've had so much trouble recognizing him is because that's just it. He looks literally different to where I could have sworn he either got some surgery or different makeup in this before Star Trek days. It's like, uh, the, the very fire. rubbery, rubbery, rubbery face, you know. Yeah. yeah. I know he did. I think he did this and, uh, Child's Play 2 back-to-back, and, like, he plays, like, a comedic That's zombie true. in this, and then he plays the asshole uh, foster dad in uh, Child's Play 2. That's right, and I'm sure he gets a bunch of questions about that role. <laughs> I don't know, he has the best scene in, in, in uh, Child's Play 2 with, how's it hanging, Phil? <laughs> Jeffy <laughs> drops him on his neck. But, but uh, he, he's, he's, he's absolutely, uh, like, wonderful in this movie, like, playing, like, uh, like a uh, bud, the, the the chud, he's a zombie. I'm just gonna call him a fucking zombie because that's exactly yeah. what. He is. And um, chud be. Yeah, there's, sure. there's, a, there's a great scene where like all all the all the zombies go to like a school dance, and uh, and the the lady sitting at the front goes, uh, well, there's an entrance fee, five bucks, and they start looking amongst themselves like who got five, <laughs> and it's a, and they have a dog, <laughs> with them, and the dog. And the dog can't come in, and they go, uh, and then they eat her. <laughs> they eat her. <laughs> Jesus. No, nah, it's, 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 it's a perfectly fine. Uh, it's got uh, um, Robert Vaughn in it as well. Uh, oh, he was in, he was in everything. Robert Vaughn was in <laughs> everything. Rip. He plays like a, like a, I think he plays like a colonel in there trying to track down Bud, who's, a, who's you know, basically like, uh, he's basically. Uh, a lost uh, experiment that got away, and they were going to use him kind of like a, almost like um, similar to Night of the Creeps, <laughs> you know. Damn. And then uh, he just he just gets loose, you know what I'm saying? And he causes havoc around the town and uh, that kind of stuff. But uh, it's perfectly fine zombie comedy, and I don't know why people don't talk about it more or like it more. It's like anything that's obscure must be bashed because it's clearly not good. Well, you'd be mistaken, people. Uh, uh, in my pick's case, yes, it is bad. Well, <laughs> I know, but I, I just mean in general. It's just like, I mean, also, I mean, we're also just fans of bad movies, so it makes a difference. So, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Right. Just, I'm gonna just be so glad I did not go with Corona zombies. Oh, <laughs> why? Damn you, Charles Band. Oh, so, <laughs> and, and not to self promote here, but definite topic for a uh, very distant future uh, retrospective on my Nightmare Nerd channel is going to be full moon. What the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. When did you guys start looking as amateurish as trauma and lose the fun? <laughs> oh. So I'm going to pick an obscure one. Has anyone here seen The Dead? Uh, Not... Yeah, I actually have it here. Uh, print. I, I printed so. it off, yeah. 2010, uh, and yeah. it's uh, one of those movies. Oh, that's it, a great year. Yeah, well, it wasn't a good year, but I mean, it was an interesting, just low budget movie. Basically, the sky crash lands in a passenger plane in South Africa, just finds out that there's this epidemic, and uh, there's some very realistic, very uh, just no moments, you know, where people getting their skin fucking uh, peeled off and. And it's one of those you flat out want to fucking choke the zombies to death. It's like, how dare you do that to these beloved characters? No, you motherfucker. Um, 
So very emotional, very primed. There was a sequel to this. It's reasonable, but it's got nothing on the first one. I'm just sorry. Just something about having an African soldier and an unrelated, you know, troubled past uh, white man in a, you know, now unrecognizable country. Just that was just so surreal, more telling. And uh, just the way the zombies were was also cool because these are when we were in such a post 28 days later resident evil fashion it was cool to have a return to the slow moving ones mm -hmm, and then right. just once again just more of the just once they get to you it's like the then the beast side of them is shown but i mean it's also one of those it's very stealthy so they have to sneak away from the zombies in the dark you know without being seen it's like the zombies can hear them but the more you can delay them the better and they're trying to get abandoned automobile uh, bills started up and it's like it, it really was very creative and then when they keep flashing back to the character's troubled past they do it without being intrusive to where you're like what the hell does this have to do with anything you know it, it actually resonates and it's like okay so that's what this has to do with this and that's why this is very telling so i thought the uh, color palette in this one this was a lot of oranges and reds you know because it's africa it was a very, yes. uh, it was, there was or today it's California. <laughs> exactly. It could, it could double for true. it. It could double for it right now, yeah. Because I thought it was just saying that. Yeah, I, uh. I, I, I thought it was very <laughs> unique. Yeah, this is, that is a really good overlooked zombie movie for all the reasons you said. Yeah, it's, 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 it's well done. It, the relationship between the, the white mercenary and the, African soldier is great. It's got a little bit of blood diamond going on there. Like they have to join yeah, it's together. It's true. Yeah. They're like come completely different worlds, but they have to join together to survive this. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, a, I have not seen the sequel, but uh, the original is actually really great. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. The, the Ford brothers, they've been doing so many crime movies and other stuff since like the nineties. And this was definitely their magnum opus. The one where they just went all out and got some, but finally got some, worthy acclaim it's like yeah uh, you guys uh you know i wish these movies were better known because they definitely fulfill the genre needs without overdoing it or just i don't know just feeling convoluted or poorly made it it was it paid off so is, is the sequel worth my time i uh, you know it definitely was more gory and action packed. Uh, I thought it was just reasonable. I just didn't find the story as fascinating, but it was it was suitable. It was passable. It was just like, mm. wow, all right, good I mean, choice. It, it comes on Sci Fi Channel a lot, and they don't edit it much at all. You see every fucking yeah. uh, headshot. It's not it's Sci Fi, it's like, CP. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh damn. I have not watched them in years, but I insist on them being called CP until they change back to the proper name. CP <laughs> <laughs> channel. CP. Uh, uh, I think I can come up with another one for you. All right. Cough it up. I forgot about this one. Uh, 1993, My Boyfriend's Back. <laughs> ah! Classic. My Boyfriend's Back. Um, I've heard of it. It's oh. a really effing bad comedy. <laughs> That's why I haven't seen it. <laughs> Basically about a, about a girl whose boyfriend comes back from the dead. Surprise, motherfucker. Uh, that, they probably should have said that, but uh, I, believe, <laughs> I believe this literally is the very first movie for Matthew McConaughey. No. And, and he wasn't even in a big role. He was just one of the faces. In the crowd, you know, he was pulling the Billy Bob Thornton. It was is available. It, is, isn't Philip Seymour Hoffman in that too? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. This movie actually has a cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, a cast before they were a cast. Ma Matthew Fox. Oh wow! Before he was beating okay. women. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> well, don't judge. So, when you beat women, you beat zombies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how you learn. Oh, damn. The it's best part is zombies stitch. can't say ouch. All right. <laughs> I hope there's no Me Too people listening. Um, so. God, I'm terrible. Particularly when I'm oh, buzzed. Uh, we are now all going to get unfriended by our female friends. Anyway, um, so. Um, How <laughs> I have not yet, I'm still amazed. 
I, I, I haven't said anything. I've been quiet. <laughs> yeah, Rafa, be quiet. Yeah, shit on me. Guilty I'm by a, association. I, I was just sitting here quiet. I said nothing. I said nothing. I said nothing. Two female viewers, I do apologize. I'm just being crass. You point the finger at me again. Anyway, uh, so um, instead of running away, let's. Uh, why, why does this movie appeal in a so bad it's good way? Um, mainly because I just remember it being advertised so heavily in my boyhood. <laughs> and even, even as a kid, the commercial struck me as just intensely stupid. Wow. So before you had quality control, you were still questioning it. You were just like, e even what? when I was watching oh. freaking Thunder in Paradise, this movie was pretty <laughs> <dominant."> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, well, there uh, we go. Everyone I, learns. I used to love this as a kid, and I remember one time I was uh, hanging out with my aunt Emily, and uh, it was on TV, and I was like, oh, oh, I love this movie. And she was like, oh, what's this? It's like my boyfriend's bag. So she put it on, like, the, like to watch it with me. And yeah. I like I turned to her to like to see how she's reacting, and she's sitting cross legged with like uh, her <laughs> her face, and I just know she's judging me, like like. Oh, he, I he hate that, shit. but can you blame her? <laughs> he watches this shit. He actually watches this shit. I was like, sorry, sorry. Spike meeting Bob Balaban. What the fuck? Wow. Wow. Honestly, my main memory because I've never watched this all the way through. It just, <laughs> it's just from the commercials where you've got the, the torch literal torch-bearing mob and the one at the head of the crowd with a pistol in his hand tells our female main character that he's a stinking zombie, you idiot. Wow. <laughs> uh, fun, uh, fun trivia. This was actually written by Dean Laurie who also wrote uh, Jason Goes to Hell. And, oh, uh, wow, what a shock. <laughs> he, the, he, said, he said in the commentary to that that... Uh, uh, it was bought by Disney, and they pussified the script. That uh, it was actually a lot darker in his original version. And wow, the, the original so title shocked. was the original title was uh, Johnny Zombie. Was it was his original title. That makes better sense, especially when this was filmed at the same place, same house as Nightmare on Elm Street. Sean Cunningham from Friday franchise is a producer. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! They filmed this at Round Rock, Texas. Poor souls. Poor bastards. And, and if you um, look at it, it's really an attempt to try to cash in on the popularity of Buffy. That makes better sense, because this is yeah. 92, 93. Oh. So this gets dropped from Touchstone. This uh, has... Just without the Renee's... easy Pee Herman. <laughs> and Renee Zellweger <laughs> has a couple of lines, but got her scenes cut out. So there you go. Peter Jackson was rumored to direct. So, wow. This, this is a one you, you should do a Peter Jackson before he was Peter Jackson special one day. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, we'll definitely do his 10 best movies, and we'll definitely uh, bring up Meet, meet the Feebles, the Feebles Dead, Dead Alive. Yeah, yeah Dead Alive. Dead. Bad, Bad taste. taste, yeah. But uh, that just, uh, you just said that Renee Zellweger is also in that? Well, she, she, she filmed scenes, but her scenes were omitted. But still, this has people like Jay Saunders, who's been an asshole in every single TV show. Cloris Leachman as a zombie expert. Jesus Christ. Uh, Cloris yeah, Leachman. I was going so to point out that, uh, you know, that uh, this was, uh, I guess, um, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Renee Zellweger, finally got their due with, uh, they made um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the, the next generation, mm -hmm. after, which is... Uh, <laughs> Which is uh, one of my favorite uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. Ruby. And I, I Joe Stevens Wasn't is... Vigo Mortensen in that, too? Oh, you're thinking of <laughs> part, part three, three, Daniel. Ah, uh, yeah. That part three. Three. I actually uh, recommend part three a lot, but it gets a lot of bashing. But, oh. Nah, I, I love, I love uh, Next Generation because it is batshit insane. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, there is there is a scene where Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey have a battle with remote controls over uh, Matthew McConaughey's robot leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It, it is it is just absolutely wonderful if you're into. And just, doesn't he like snap someone's neck while piloting a plane? It's like you just could not make a movie like that today. Yeah, and then um. He fucking uh he steps on Darla's neck. There's a woman in there named Darla who bought a a, a stack of pizzas and then nobody's eating them. 
So I don't mean to be a party pooper, but it's late. I'm tired and the pizza getting cold. And Matthew McCarty just throws on. And nobody asked you fucking shit. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm watching this movie tonight. It is hilarious. It is absolutely I'm watching this hilarious. tonight. That's great. Very By the way, great. correct me if I'm wrong here. McConaughey in particular, wasn't his very first credited role on Unsolved Mysteries? I believe so. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Portraying the victim of a child molester, no less. <laughs> like, yeah. his, at least, he, his, his, at least his, his work was varied before uh, he became like famous after a, a time. Yeah, thanks. At least he wasn't playing, uh, you know, the molester. So, yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> those guys get typecast as hell, and then they can't get out of it. They got to play a sleazebag or a shithead. <laughs> it's like no. Oh. I just want him to acknowledge he was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, Renee, no, it's only in like the last year or so that um, Jennifer Aniston finally owned being a leprechaun. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, she did, she did, she did. Which I, which I was happy about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, own it, man. Let own that it. be great flag fly. Right. That's what yeah. like, just own it, like Kevin Bacon owns up to the fact he was in Friday the Thirteenth. He doesn't. Have no problems saying he was in that. Like, why are these people they get famous and then they act like they weren't in these, you know, shitty movies? Well, like, right. that, gonna, that, that or the fact the that they. Okay. Well, the, you like you guys say, you don't want. You're an artist, so let people judge what's your best art. And you, don't get me wrong, you're allowed to have an opinion, but don't act like you're not really a real fan. If I mean. Clearly, they're enough of a fan if they've collected every single copy of your work. <laughs> and like performances that don't get talked about much. So there you go. Regardless of the quality of the movie, it's like we're talking about the role. I mean, we were talking about Bogart's best movies last night, and we did just hit oh, on how me. he thinks. Yeah, we, we, we talked about how he thinks Return of Dr. X is his worst movie, rumored to be somewhere. And I was like, I can understand you're not liking the movie, but you're really good as the creepy hairdo guy. So... <laughs> Oh shit! Well, I got plenty of others. Did anyone ever see State of Emergency? No, that one I'm not familiar with. That's another 2011 uh, low-budget zombie movie. This was again a uh, sibling team. They had previously done some other low-budget action movie, and this one I really like how it looks both modern day, modernly made without the you know obviously using a camcorder but still plays by the Romero handbook. It's like, what I can't show, I can hint at, so they make use of music, sound effects. You don't see many zombies, but you hear every once in a while a growl outside. Um, and uh, uh, it's also, it does a good job of creating suspense. The key moment earlier in the movie is when the character has to fetch his rifle, but he, you know, first he has to go from one building to the other without getting mauled by the zombies. <laughs> and then... He has to actually try and get the bullets, then get the actual gun. And, you know, meanwhile, he's having to find creative ways to actually, you know, kill the zombie <laughs> while he tries to make distracted and finally get the gun so he can shoot it. And it's like, that's cool. Yeah, instead of just taking up a time and having nothing happening, you guys were able to generate a lot of suspense using just the most basic, basic stuff instead of just creeping around saying, hello, <laughs> is anybody home? No, none of that <laughs> shit. And, uh, totally recommended. And once again, like the Ford brothers, I hope these guys get more work then because it, it played at some festivals and it, <laughs> at chiller, T chiller TV before they got closed down, uh, played it quite a lot. It was a lot of fun. State of emergency. Yeah. And it was not in need of any technical emergencies. So that was good. <laughs> oh, that's hey, what we else do, we come up with? We've talked are about we all, dead. Are we doing dead a second in. round? Are we going around again? Yeah, sure. Let, let's circle around. I got because I have one. I, I've been dying to bring this one up, and please tell me that you guys have seen this. 1972's Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. I hmm. haven't seen Heard this. Of it, haven't seen it. And, I, and I get dead. This. I get dead silence. Oh, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so old. Heard of it, but not seen it. Okay, oh. yeah, uh, okay. Seek it out, uh, and okay. So I've got the, I've got a print out here. The trivia is it directed by Bob Clark, who also directed. <laughs> stay with me. Black Christmas, Orkies, 
<laughs> Jerk 182, Rhinestone, and the infamous <laughs> Baby Baby Geniuses and Baby Geniuses 2. So you need to watch this uh, movie. Yeah. It, children shouldn't play with dead things. Ringing 19- endorsements. This movie. <laughs> well, no, you know, come on. Turk 182, come on. No. But this, th- I remember watching this on TV when I was a kid, and this was probably maybe the second zombie movie I ever saw after the original Night of the Living Dead. Really? So it affected, yeah. it, 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 it affected my view. It, it, I, I recommend seeking it out. And the interesting thing to me about this one is there's a zombie in the movie who is sort of a progenitor of Day of the Dead's bub. It's like this zombie that the, the main character kind of develops a relationship with. It, hmm. it's, it, I, I, I can't say more except I recommend seeking it out. You can find it probably on YouTube and nowhere else. But Do you feel like the comedy pay, plays off, or is it just better as a it's horror It's No, it's not a comedy. It's kind of campy, but it's okay. not a comedy at all. In fact, it's, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very serious. But it's oh, very so campy. I... It's, it's early 70s, so it's got a lot of that vibe. Uh, it's not so, great. So disclaimer, people, movie line in IMDb has it under comedy horror. <laughs> it's not comedy. It's not uh, comedy horror. No, no, actually, I'm looking at it right now. It is under comedy horror, but I, I disagree. It's not a comedy. <laughs> Seek it out. Please, somebody, make me feel not so old. Watch Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. That's all I got. You, you will have it. All right. Danny Boy. Danny Boy. Oh boy! Um, <laughs> oh boy! I mean, I've named two already, right? Do I gotta go again? <laughs> I mean, oh I no, know. no, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Rob right. Zombie. Give me a minute to recover here. Oh, he's got to recover. <laughs> Resuscitate! <laughs> Resuscitate! Um, I'm going to go uh, really obscure here, and um, I'm going to go with uh, 1993's The Killing Box. Oh AKA, AKA uh, Ghost Brigade, which is the is the original title that it was as made as. Also, Grey Knight and the Lost Brigade, and ah, it's a civil it's a civil great. war zombie movie. Yeah, but, uh, I, I have this one. There's like a director's cut of it somewhere. And yeah, yeah, there's, there's, it was um, there's a, a well there's um, a shorter version, 80 minutes, and the director's cut is 92 minutes. And uh, you got Corbin Burnson, Martin Sheen, Billy Bob Thornton, Taz Star, David Arquette, Alexis Arquette, Dean Cameron, <laughs> Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> hey, yes. how are you doing, zombies? Yeah. <laughs> Ray Wise. You got Ray Wise, Cinder Williams. Like, yeah, like, stack. Stack to the gills, cast. And uh, I remember catching this one on uh, Cinemax, like, late at night, one of my sleepless nights. I couldn't see. Uh, it does when play channel all the movies. And it's always one of those I would watch it and then I would forget that I'd seen it and then I'm like I should see it again. Right, absolutely, it was one of those. And I remember just like you know finding like a unique way to tell a zombie story because you've never seen a uh, zombie so, movie told in that zombies. era. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this was definitely a creepy one. I, I, I remember as being that was uh I know recently they said they were going to release a, a Blu-ray version of it if I recall like. Uh, is it Vinegar Syndrome or Shout? Or I'm I'm hoping it's Vinegar Syndrome, but I doubt it's because uh, Vinegar Syndrome really, you know, puts love and care into their transfers. Right. But uh, I, I, I I don't necessarily think it was Vinegar Syndrome that allowed uh, to announce that they were releasing the Blu-ray. But um, I was like, yeah, I haven't seen that in so long. And uh, I remember just being creeped the hell out by it, you know, especially, you know, you being a kid and watching it in the middle of the night when you shouldn't be, while you, your ass should be sleeping. <laughs> that's, that, that, yeah. that's exactly right, though. That's the movie that affected me the most when I was younger, those movies you weren't supposed to be watching. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, when you were like 12 or 9 or whatever, that's how I came into the horror how to, how to appreciate horror movies is those movies. They don't necessarily have to be good. They just had to kind of like catch your attention. And, and, and yeah, yeah. Exactly, that's exactly right. It, it, it just depends on where you were, I think. Right, right, absolutely. Is Scorpion releasing is, is who are releasing? Oh, the, uh, okay, movie. I've heard of them briefly, but no, that's cool. So it's probably a work in progress, and they're going to wait for business to actually start up again, so they'll have a reason. But... 
Uh, no, that's a good pick. I, I'm due for a rewatch of that. The Killing Box. That's definitely more of a B-movie title compared to Grey Knight. <laughs> right. uh, like, it, it's, got like, it's got like four or five different titles. I saw it as The Killing Box, so naturally that's the title I use, The Killing Box. It was definitely one of those where it's like, I want to see the director's cut, and yet for whatever reason, I just had an underwhelming experience watching the theatrical that got played. And then at the same time, I liked the concept so much. So I'm like, just get off your ass and just order the fucking set. Just like... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to just make the extra trouble, even if you because that's just it. The theatrical often does suck because people suck. So oh. that's, wow. that's I, yeah. I take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just mean in general, like in that the cr the people uh, cut it down because they want yeah. you to see all the extra content. And it was, I had this issue with the uh, movie channels because sometimes, uh, you know, they would only play the uncut version and then the home video version. It used to be, you know, unrated content and then they stopped doing it after a while. Or they would just flat out lie, and it's like, this is not the uncut version. <laughs> I saw this fucking right. thing. There's like <laughs> extra gore and nudity missing. Uh, yeah, this is not uncut. <laughs> so I'll give you another one. Uh, one of Rob's favorites, Martin. Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh. Nice. Good call. Good call. I get that it's a Romero classic, but I it's still, uh, aside from just it being hard to acquire the movie, I do feel like I still see a lot of people who have only seen latter day Romero stuff and if they've seen anything outside of them they might have seen Bruiser or Monkey Shines or the Crazies but that's it like that they haven't seen Martin even though it gets a lot of press it's like guys see Martin it's on YouTube yeah. it's on you can definitely event check eBay more frequently it or it's got to be at one movie store that you frequent so uh it, it, it's just because it's emotional and the music does all the perfectly conveys how it's a tragedy but it does it without just making you say i gotta look away or this is just i can't get into it it's just so depressingly dull it's, it's actually it pays off and it in the best way and uh i guess i'll go again uh did anyone ever see the schwarzenegger movie uh maggie yes <laughs> I, haven't and seen I know maggie. I and i know not familiar with that one actually i know everyone was instantly looking at it and they're like oh is this the one where you know he fights the devil or something. He's like, nope, it's not that kind of movie. He's <laughs> so not an action star in this outing. He's just playing a concerned father as his infected daughter, Abigail Breslin, is slowly dying of the disease and going to become a zombie. So it's, I didn't like it as much as others, but it, it still was pretty uh, visual at times and very well shot. Very, the quiet moments did actually help quite a lot with the, premise and yeah uh, it, it needs its due it's definitely going to be a movie where arnold doesn't play arnold uh, that's for sure yeah. uh, so it, i watched recently, bad I watched, I watched uh, cargo with uh, martin freeman 1970 uh, 19 uh, the one that came out a couple I, years ago i saw and that it one felt, it, yeah that's kind of the same vibe i thought although it was an infant daughter but yeah the, very similar vibe i thought both great uh, that's true. Uh, Cargo was kind of, it, it definitely had a cool idea, although I do feel like they kind of relied so much on just the lead star to carry the movie, but to be fair, the lead star was really good in it, so it, it's, that's definitely one of Netflix's less disappointing efforts. It had that sort of uh, African vibe like The Dead that we just talked about, that sort of orange and red hue, that, that, that palette, you know, very dry and hot, which I dug. Yeah, the the filmmakers know how to convey the temperature in the room. It's very, it's a very rare feeling. Um, right, make it uncomfortable. Like being in a zombie apocalypse isn't uncomfortable enough. We're gonna make it yeah. hot as hell. Hot as fuck. You can even just see the sweat in Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I, I want one. I want to call one out and see if anyone is with me on this. 1985's Life Force. Anybody? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're all talking about Life Space Force. Girl. Space Tubular, Girl. Tubular, boobular joy. <laughs> right. 
That's all I'm going to say about that one. That, I'm sorry. I remember watching that one the first time thinking, why aren't all movies like this, man? Fucking shriveled zombies and girls, naked girls walking around. It's a, I think it's Species so, is it's, a better version of this. You're this is proud. definitely fun. <laughs> species, like, actually, good called Species is, yeah, very similar, very similar. I just oh, remember it was, it was Patrick, you have to watch Patrick Stewart kiss another guy. So, I mean, you know, it, it was just, it, it was, it was just great. Who does that with Ian McKellen uh, all the time? Ian's busy. Sometimes Ian is just busy, right? I get it. I get it. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought bro. that was a good call. Yeah, I, I love that movie. I just remember when it came out. It was it's ridiculous, but the special effects are are good for its time. And it's got I love the um the last bit when you sort of see London falling to the vampires, the zombies slash vampires. I just Ooh. love that part of it and and of course space girl walking around naked but I'm, uh, I, won't, I won't go any further and next guy now thank you oh Actually, yeah you know, since i since i had a tv show before i got another one for you <laughs> go for it Brand, the cold the cold check the night stalker episode the zombie oh yeah cold check so good so good oh i love that show even though all i can think of is him shouting at a, a radiator <laughs> but um, so good. this this was actually for, for such a corny show. This was a pretty strong episode. The zombie design was actually really great. He looks pretty fucking scary. <laughs> but the thing that always got me about this was how Kolchak stalks him to his resting place in the junkyard, and <laughs> apparently he rides a bus back to the junkyard. And I'm like, nobody <laughs> notices this guy on the bus. <laughs> uh, is this a kind of bus that you see in movies like Speed or no? no sorry, no, it's like a seventies bus. Damn. <laughs> no, that, but, that's a good um, call. But yeah, the, the scene where Kolchak is trying to perform the ritual to banish the zombie inside this like car truck with this corpse only a few feet away, and as he's trying to sew its mouth shut because he stuffed the mouth with salt. That's part of the ritual. The eyes open, and you see the zombie glance around and look at him. That's actually pretty damn effective. Yeah. They, they uh, definitely had good 70s uh, makeup people for TV on occasion. And uh, it's definitely one of those. I know there was a zombie episode of X-Files, but it wasn't really a scary one. It was kind of more of a just... Uh, their take on a zombie was just a guy who just become mindless and very just like to suck blood, almost kind of like a vampire, kind of. Yeah, yeah, Kolchak okay. was one of those shows that came along at just the right time in my sort of development. What was I, seven or eight years old when it came out? It, and it just it was just in my wheelhouse, and I just ate up every single moment of it. Yeah, great, great choice. Very and cool. uh, actually, since you mentioned the X-Files, if you guys may not know this already, you probably do. Darren, <laughs> McGav Darren McGavin did have a few guest spots on the show. The creators of X-Files, they begged him, please wear the Kolchak hat. But he just because <laughs> they would. wanted they were big fans of Kolchak and they wanted to imply Kolchak started the X Files. <laughs> Wasn't doing a game of favorites, huh? <laughs> yeah, that fucking what was that? The woven sort of pork pie hat. Yeah, it's great. That yeah. was so, oh, it's, uh, takes me back. Very cool. Well, thank, glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, uh, has next? anyone? Has anyone uh, seen uh, Battle of the Dam? What was that? Battle of the Dam? Battle of the Dam. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Dolph nice. Lundgren, and, Dolph Lundgren and Cyborgs. Uh, imagine if they redid Escape from New York, but Dolph Lundgren had a more convoluted a bunch of people who, and mad scientists to have to deal with and rescue. And then, yes, uh, the whole city is on, over ramp with zombies, some of them naked, and he, he uh -huh. finds these giant, well, well, actually very good CGI uh, cyborg zombies who, you know, he gets to kill zombies with. So. <laughs> cyborg, cyborg zombies fish. just seems unnecessarily complicated to me. Are they zombies <laughs> or are they cyborgs? No, 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 no. He, no, 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 no. He's, he's using cyborgs to kill zombies. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. I'm so sorry. it's I got a Terminator cyberpunk kind of look. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, sorry. I mean, oh, good. it were to go full canon, then he was married to Brigitte Nielsen. So, I mean, he's already know he knows about zombies already. Because <laughs> their acting was mostly zombified. So, yay. 
Yay. Uh, <laughs> Nielsen. Oh my god, I'm I'm having an eighties flashback right now, I swear to god. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm gonna have, I'm, uh, I'm gonna take have, another I'm drink, gonna, Van. Take another drink. I'm gonna I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna drop out of, I'm I'm gonna have to drop out of college again just to get my eighties vibe back. <laughs> Be in debt again. Have <laughs> so debt. Perfect. Work at JC Penny's again. Oh god. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go kill myself. I'll be right back. So, oh god. Don't come day. back as a zombie. <laughs> uh, I, I, no promises. No promises. Zombie. Be, be, oh my god. The, cran the cranberries. Thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, cyborg zombies, uh, uh, the cyborg zombies, uh, uh, throw out uh, Return of the Living Dead three, which features <laughs> kind of just that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That that's 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 a, that's a good one because uh, for some reason or another, people act like that one sucks. Return of the Living, and I don't know why. But, uh, I guess because it's like more serious than the first two were. I think it's because it had been a while since the last few and it wasn't well marketed. And like you say, it's very emotional, very gritty, very more Romero than even Bal uh, the last two. And it's like, yeah. for whatever reason. And uh, Anthony Hickox, the director, has a rare appearance. Credit as no, Tony. No, no. A no, Anthony. Oh, you saying, uh, I thought, my bad, my bad. I thought he, you were he, saying. Directing. He's the scientist who gets it, the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, thought you were about to say he directed it. Did. No, my bad. <laughs> I wish. He probably wish he did after he saw how awesome oh, it was. No, 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 no. no. Brian Usna is perfectly, uh, is A-OK -okay in my book. Uh, yeah, uh, I, w I would watch Melinda Clark on Firefly, Nikita, and the OC, and I'm like, but she'll always be, yeah, uh, from from this movie. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for, fuck you, Spawn. You got nothing on this. Uh, she is dynamite here. She's so uh, emotional. She gives an award worth award worthy performance and but I, I think that's that's probably where people most remember her best from like if uh you know like we all want to forget spawn fucking abomination of <laughs> I hate that I, I, I'm with you brother and I so many of my friends love that movie and they uh, hate every other kind of movie and I'm like why there is nothing there not, not even Martin Sheen he you want to talk about very ineffective villain I still don't know why right. he fucking killed him I still don't know. And I don't care because that movie is like reading Dante's Inferno on acid. It just sucks. No. <laughs> I'll have to I remember uh, I remember uh, uh, I was in um, my living room years ago and I was having my bedroom painted. So I was in the living room while they were doing that and Spawn was on sci fi channel. So I was like, uh, damn, I haven't seen it in years. Let's, let's see. Let's see how well I remember it. Like how I still feel about it. And I was like, after a, a little bit, I'm like, Oh my God! This is fucking terrible. <laughs> has, it always, has it always been this terrible? Oh my God! Yeah, it was. Awful. Yeah, it was. I and was it like, says a no, lot because Stephen De Souza wrote a few witty Die Hard type references in the script, and there's a SWAT team. You'd think there'd be dynamite in here, and yet, you know, Jay White accepted the fanfare. Yet at the same time, he didn't think it was one of his best movies. But don't get me wrong; they're going to do worse. I have no faith in this movie. Do you see Jamie Foxx's spawn? I'm no, sorry. No, no. Jamie Foxx is a guy who plays an inspirational leader or comic relief. Fucking Spawn? No. And, and it is pointless because fucking Tom McFarlane said that Spawn doesn't even speak in the movie. Yeah. Like, so what the fuck do you cast Jamie Foxx for? Stick with the it's HBO just... cartoon. Yes, yes. You know, I, I recently revisited that cartoon and... I loved it as a kid. I've got mixed feelings now as an adult. Well, it's Spun was never one that you like really, really enjoy, but just the quirkiness of it all was kind of like Hellboy, well, where it just sucked the, you the in. An, the animation is still very strong. Yeah. Well, Keith David and did good in the voice. The, the voice acting is good. Keith David is a god of voice acting. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Gargoyles, baby. But but wa watching it as an adult, I just start to feel really depressed, and I feel like, is this town populated by nothing but gangsters and pedophiles and just yeah. so obviously it's in LA makes you wonder if this is based off a dark chapter of Todd's life <laughs> yeah, I think it just came out in that era of uh, like you know the 90s what they they call the dark ages of comic books where everything the just and all that yeah 
Yeah, grim dark. You know, what I'm saying as they like to call it, as, as the kids call it, uh, the grim dark age. And it's like, no, Sp- I mean, Spawn like, Spawn was the one comic I had to purchase in the slide because my, <laughs> of, of all people, my dad, who was a comic fan himself, he did not want in the house. <laughs> Fair enough. He, he'd seen a few issues I had, and he was just like, "Son, don't, don't read this crap anymore." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my parents didn't mind me having Spawn comics. I used to have like all of like Image comic stuff, like Spawn and Profit, you know. And it was, like their covers were always like overdrawn, overdrawn, kid, like women, characters, very like with same popping. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, holding like holding like the biggest fucking gun you've ever seen in your life. Like, yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't even make sense to have this. This gun, is endorsed by the NRA. <laughs> Charlton has some straight up movie. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Get yeah, your damn that? dirty gun, hands off my big ass my, gun. Uh, my AR-15, you liberals. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay. sorry. Oh, good. Sorry. good. Has anyone here seen Dead in Breakfast? I think some of us had here last time. It was it's a pretty oh, weird, it's familiar. It's a pretty I, wacky I comedy. It. Yeah, I heard of it, but I never seen. It. I passed it in the in the video store back in the day, like a bunch of times, but I never pulled the trigger on it. Oh, good. It's kind of a nowadays you could probably definitely get it in one of those multi DVD packs from Mill Creek or Anchor Bay. So oh yeah, if you see it on there. It might be worth it, even if there's nothing else on the disc worth giving a fuck about um one that i think is way better that came out around the same time uh dead and deader so long story Mm -hmm. short this movie makes fun of everything uh uh, from predator to star wars it's just another army base so basically you got mad scientist matt peter green yeah, it's totally a Hot Shots type movie. It might as well be because it doesn't take itself seriously at all. It's got Dean Kang in an actually good role, and it's uh, <laughs> oh, and, boy. And, and yeah, <laughs> and it's just funny as fuck. And yeah, Peter Green from Pulp Fiction, you know, Zed Zed's dead, baby. He is 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 outrageous, and it the the gory action is fun, and again, just so many different references, and just it's so wacky how they even all become zombies. It's just funny, and. Delivers on the said, action. Go ahead. No, I was saying that uh, you said, like, it's funny how people always remember Peter Green from uh, Pulp Fiction, and I could see why, because, you know, Zed, it's like, how could you forget the character of Zed? But I always oh. remember him from Under Siege 2. A the, mercenary uh, number two. I, I yeah. think it's because he's uncredited that people forget he's in the movie, but he does get a big, big moment for mercenary number two. It, it, uh... <laughs> Casey and, fucking Ryback. Yeah, Casey Ryback. My boy, Patrick Kilpatrick. Patrick Kilpatrick. Uh, all that was missing was David Patrick Kelly. Instead, they got Everett McGill from License to Kill. <laughs> Wasn't he in The Usual Suspects? Didn't he have that great... He's the guy who flicks the cigarette yeah, the at the one exchange right. yeah. at Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah which, which was Baldwin was uh, not, not too happy about. <laughs> Yeah. But, but what that was Stephen Baldwin's only good role. Name me another movie that Stephen Baldwin was good in, other than the usual I like, suspects. I like Timmy Fled with uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, uh, really? uh, okay, so yes, yeah, so two <laughs> movies from '95. Uh, Bio, <laughs> Biodome is obviously not going to be mentioned. Despite the wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, remember, remember, uh, also remember, uh, uh, he was also in Posse with uh, Mario Van Peebles. Oh, that's fair. Mario that's, Van Peebles. That checks out. That checks out. <laughs> yes. The most Yo, fuck, so 80s we're... of all 80s actors. Yeah. With right. Tommy Tiny Lister playing it all normal. Yo, but, but check it out, check it out. Uh, I was telling uh, Di, uh, uh, y'all know Di, I was telling her about Posse and she had never heard of it. So I yeah. sent her I sent her the trailer like, uh, like uh, <laughs> so she could watch. And she watched it and she, she messaged me back, is this a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I saw Stephen Baldwin and I was like, this got to be a comedy. <laughs> so yeah, you got Richard Edson from Ferris Bueller in Strange Days in a brief part. You got uh, you got fucking Sergeant Powell from Die Hard in a brief moment. You even got fucking Isaac Hayes, Pam Greer, and Tone Loke. And yeah, he wishes he did the little wild thing in this movie. Sally Richardson from Eureka, fucking butt ass naked. You got 
evil Blair Underwood and I patch Kelly's. <laughs> so, have I not sold you on this? I hope I have. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, uh, I think I got to. It was check followed by out. a sequel called Los Locos, and that one was boring, despite having Danny Trejo as a bandit. So, I like I like how you like you you mentioned you you refer to original Bill Johnson as Sergeant Powell and not Carl I Winslow. Have to, man, <laughs> fucking Die Hard, and they even made a King nice. Bill sketch about it. Or... Like no, no, I, I appreciate that because everybody goes to fucking Carl Winslow. Like like dude, he was Sergeant Powell yeah. oh, before he was fucking Carl Winslow. Exactly. Hey, and the, the King man was Pill. born to play a cop. Uh, yeah, he basically was, even though he plays the jail cell cop in fucking Ghostbusters. Yeah, Billy. Yeah, but, like her, Turner and Hooch. Yeah, Turner and Hooch. I, I, I think you can make your own. Uh, and he even plays the Sergeant Powell role on an episode of Chuck again. So there you go. He just can't escape it. But uh, yeah, I just had to go there because they made a Key and Pill sketch about it, where he's basically it's a Phil Family Matters audition, and I think it's Jordan Pills playing uh, yeah. Phil Johnson, and he's like, I, I, I was in fucking Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just like the fact that he went for that he went for the Twinkies because I'm down with that. I would have fucking gone for the Twinkies. Oh too. yeah, baby. Get me that. Yeah, that's what been my choice. fucking yeah. night ever, man. You're gonna need. You're gonna buy out that whole store of Twinkies. Oh. <laughs> oh, so yeah, Dead and Deader delivers. Uh, I've talked about Warning Sign before. Am I the only person who's seen this movie? Uh, sounds like it. Uh, so this played religiously on HBO and Cinemax. It was from 85, great year for horror, and has uh, G.W. Bailey from Police Academy in a serious role, uh, year, years before The Closer. It has uh, Sam Waterston, Kathleen Quinlan, and it's just that it's often been described as the uh, the China Syndrome meets Night of the Living Dead, because it's just one of those, an experiment gone wrong, but it's just so intelligently done. And it manages to not be lowbrow. It manages to be very well drawn out and create alien type tension, if not be a story. It's pretty action packed, yeah. and it's a pretty intelligent script. Uh, it's a good movie. I'm looking it up right now. I'm going to have to add it to my list here. I've never it's, heard of it. It might actually mean a little more in the Corona era. You don't know why when you see it. Uh, you fed Kodo. Hell yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. And. But yeah, the Waterston, this was after he did the Killing Fields, so it's a more more intense role. Years before he was shouting everyone's face off on Law and Order. Yeah. <laughs> I object! <laughs> Your Honor! I'm sorry, but Sam Waterston, all I ever see of him is him in Capricorn 1. I know that's an off topic. Oh my god. Not... <laughs> that's I, a very small I, role. Though. I love that movie beyond measure. I don't want to go off because we're not talking about that kind of movie, but yeah, that's what I see. When I see him, I see Capricorn 1. I see oh, fucking Telly Savalas, you pervert. And, yeah. <laughs> we love you, baby. Yeah, what's that like? Uh, I, I okay, that. baby. I digress. <laughs> Telly, dude, regarding Telly Savalas, uh, Guy always pointed out to me that uh, he always plays a prick when you see him in a movie. Oh, absolutely. Kelly's Heroes? Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my but God. I thought so good. The dirty, a, what, he was a prick and dirty cousin as well. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, with all maggot, the, you know, come to, come to think of it, in terms of underrated zombie movies, uh, Horror Express. Mm, oh that, my god! Oh my god! Good call. Good. That call. is a good because te- technically yeah. that is a zombie movie, albeit they're only in like the last ten minutes or so. But uh, it's oh, a pretty watchable really movie, as goofy as it is. But yeah, it's kind of no. a. Su- and Tony Savalas is in there. But yeah, yeah. That one, that's one of those really early, like, w- catching it on TV movies that like warped my fucking brain when I was a little kid. That's perfect. Good call. Good call. And I'm surprised he didn't do more zombie movies, given all the Italian shit he did overseas and Mexico as well. So, yeah. (laughs) Kojak's a cool guy. Uh, But uh, you mentioned Capricorn 1. I'm surprised Peter Hyams didn't helm a zombie movie at one point with his buddy Van Damme or some shit. So, it's weird. Yeah, if we ever do if we ever do 70s conspiracy thrillers, Capricorn 1 is an overlooked (laughs) gem. And I will get off my soapbox, but that is a great movie. Have you ever done a double feature with that and Hangar 18? <laughs> oh, Hangar 18. No, I've heard of it. I have not seen it. KTMA. I'm ashamed, I, I'm ashamed to admit. Classic oh. KTMA MST3K. That's all I'll say. It's Robert Vaughn. Uh, 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 when you said double feature, I thought you were going to say Outland. Oh, well. That Outland. No, out- oh, my God. 
Sean Connery at his most badass. I just yeah. brought up Hangar 18 because it's a conspiracy movie also. <laughs> you, uh, but, 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 but like Capricorn. No, but I, I, thought you, I, I thought you was going for And your mother was going to buy us two, Trebek. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. John Connery, okay, Peter Hyams, for 500. That is a great, great movie. I mean, uh, we definitely, yeah, we definitely need, I'm a big, big fan of that one. We definitely, we definitely need to do underrated space movies. Oh, oh hell yes. Yeah. When I get done with cyberpunk and all this shit. Uh, there's another one zombie <laughs> film from rather recent uh, The Girl with All the Gifts. Uh, yes. You can definitely find that. It is zombie. You can definitely, it's more of a science thriller, but like you say, the zombies are in the background. It's not a movie you enjoy, but you can't deny the acting for a cast that's led by Glenn Close and everybody. But uh, it's one of those, it's a bizarre one. But if you just want to kill some time, it does come on Netflix and sci fi quite a lot. And yeah, I'll just leave it. I watched it, I watched it, and I remember thinking, why am I watching this? But you know, I could just be old, so it might just be me. I definitely zoned out at different points at it, but at the same time, it didn't feel as pretentious as the other garbage I get exposed to on a daily basis. So it was, it was a mild watch. It's a six out of 10 type movie. Um, maybe a five. I don't know. Definitely not a four. Like I'd have to watch it. I have to watch it again. I'd have to go back uh, and read it. Oh, good. For sure. And now, uh, Mark Dacascos. That's right. Iron chef, John Wick free and, uh, every other Kung Fu movie from the nineties fame, uh, did a movie called the driver. No relation to Walter Hill from 2019. That, much like from *Dust Till Dawn*, you see the cover, you don't remotely think it is what it is, but it's a action horror zombie movie. The Driver. Yeah, not bad. That was, yeah, that was. I know a lot of people complained about that one because. Uh, and someone like, said there was no action in it. I'm like, you clearly didn't. Yeah. Watch. There's a gunshot <laughs> I, I, every five minutes. I, I think they were like they were complaining more about the because it's Mark Dacascos and it was just martial arts. Oh my god. He's and got a like, career that you guys don't. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, shut up. Just shut up. He was on fucking Hawaii Five O and Iron Chef. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> he was on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> My grandmother loved him on him. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> he was in the better version of Drive from 97. Your argument is invalid. Uh, oh, I mean, wow. both, both versions are good. I, they're apples and oranges. I, I, I refuse to compare. Oh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> good call. All I'm saying is Drive in 97, that was basically crank of the 90s, or speed if it was a human. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it was great. Uh, and then there's... Can uh, I... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm just doing honorable uh, mentions at this point. I, yeah. I wanna, yeah, me too. Honorable mention for me, if I may, 2008 Splinter. Ooh, good call. Very right? good call. My, this movie, my, yeah, for, so good uh special effects not great but pretty good all done in camera shay wingham who has been who has gone on to do a thousand other great things and and the great thing about it is it, it's also a, a human story he, you think he is one thing shay wingham's character at the beginning you think he's just some crackhead gonna rob these guys kill their car it, it, it turns into something else he becomes the sort of hero I'm sorry, but I, I can't say enough about it. I think it's a great movie, and yeah. and, and that's and and that, thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. I, I I appreciate you bringing that one up because that movie's actually closer than I would actually believe. Yeah, it was filmed in Oklahoma City. It stars a pre-Breaking Bad Charles Baker, uh, you know, before it was Skinny Pete, and uh, yes, yes, and, and uh, the sheriff is played by my theater acting teacher Laura Wissett. So she's the uh, one who gets. She's the one who, who gets glitched right there outside the front yeah, of the, the thing. Yeah. Lots of shotgun just, action, stunt coordination by uh Rob's man, uh JJ Perry. Uh uh great great movie. Great I think an overlooked gem uh, in every way. In I remember af after it played in festivals, it premiered it was one of the first movies to premiere on H D net while it was still in theater. So it was a big, big deal. Um and yeah, Paula Costanza, before he was on Royal Pains and Designated Survivor, is really good, especially with how he handles the shotgun. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it kind of has a they live the stuff kind of feel to it. And Magnet did good by releasing it. There's the hours stuff. of special features on it. We yeah. should do an entire show on the stuff. I just want to talk about the stuff for an hour. <laughs> I really do. I really Shout do. out to Homicidal Homemaker. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is so great. 
I mean, fucking Garrett Morris. Come on. Garrett Morris, baby. Oh, so there's another one also from 2013, not to be confused with what I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, called Army of the Damned. And it stars uh, yeah. Tony Todd as a douchebag uh, group of uh, SWAT guys. And yeah, it, it is what it is. It, it's restricted to its budget, but basically it's very deliberately over the top. Got some physical gags and some heavy metal rock music playing nonstop. But yeah, it's just basically everybody's just going ape shit, slowly turning into zombies. And it's a part haunted house kind of tribute as well, because eventually everyone has to raid this unusual house and then they all just eventually everybody either becomes a zombie or gets lost or knocked out. So basically you lose track of everything, but it does it in a way where it's like, even though it's not perfect, you can't fault them for being creative with what they got to work with. So if you can get past some of the overexposed lighting, it is a lot of fun, especially with all the various kills and how it just keeps, it feels comfortable being its own thing instead of, I got to rip off all the other grades. Yeah. It's probably got Michael Berryman in who, hello, he's been in, Yes, Absolutely. he has a very every, unusual. He's been in, he's been in everything. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Also, an, another Dallas made movie, Daylight's In, with Louis oh, Mandel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Lance Henriksen. Yeah. Despite some Johnny crappy Strong. CGI at the beginning, yeah, Johnny Strong's in there. Uh, yeah, just check it out if you want some a John Carpenter made movie that he didn't make. It's. Yeah, totally. Maybe do a double feature of it with Ghosts of Mars if you're that bored. So, no, I will not watch Ghosts of Mars ever again. I'm All right. Sorry. Perfect. Sorry. Also, uh, also, I'd like to throw in uh, the since we're doing mentions, uh, Overlord. Oh, uh, yes, please. Yes, Fair Overlord. Enough. Yes, uh, it's, uh, I know like they 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 they're more experiments than anything, but they're practically fucking super zombies. So no, I, I think they could get a mention. And yeah, where uh, Wyatt Russell takes his place as the heir to Kurt Russell's throne. And he basically becomes the, the the living embodiment of young Kurt Russell in that movie. It was like, ah, uh, I, I I would I I don't want an Escape from New York remake, but if it has to be done, please just get Wyatt Russell. You might as well because he's he's basically his dad now, and, and he perfectly shows that in Overlord. You uh, might get it eventually. I don't think you'll get it now, but uh. I had issues with that movie, but it's definitely watchable. It's just, I guess because it just felt like they took every kind of 80s cliche they could. I, I just didn't really resonate with it. Yeah, just put it in a blender and just mix it up and fucking drink it down. I, th I thought it was great. I mean, no, it's kind of, it was... it's similar to Zone Troopers, kind of, but yeah, it's fun. And that and that guy, uh, I can't pronounce his name, Pilo As Asbeck, who plays, he's the main Nazi bad guy in that the, he just, yeah. he, just own, he owns the screen whenever he's on screen. He was in um, Game of Thrones, which I liked. <laughs> he's one of those actors who just commands attention when he's on screen, I think. Yeah, he he was also in... Um, he's in The uh, Great Wall really briefly. Yeah, he's good. He was also in uh, Ghost, Ghost in the Shell, the, the Scarlett Johansson one. Uh, oh, and he was in the, what's that one Lucy with Scarlett Johansson he's in very briefly in Lucy yeah. and again he's in it for like 10 minutes but he just kind of commands attention when he's in it he's got one of those yeah. that, that, that aura about him I think he probably yeah, wants cool. to be in every movie with Scarjo so there you go <laughs> yeah, who doesn't not me <laughs> her Jedi mind tricks don't work on me <laughs> uh. <laughs> Overlord, people, rewatch like it. I like it. Or don't watch it. Watch Who it. Who doesn't want to watch zombies get? I mean, Nazis get killed. I could do uh, that shit all day long. Give me glorious bastards. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Replace Overlord with Outpost trilogy. Boom. Roasted. Uh, the Overlord could stay. You could just add on Outpost. <laughs> nah, Hulk. over Outpost has Ray Stevenson. Come on now. Can't we all just get along? Yes. <laughs> nah. Perfect. No, we can't. We can't. I just want to. I want to watch the world burn. Don't you know? Damn. <laughs> Seriously. Um. Well. Uh. I got shit tons of other shit here. Um. Uh. So. Uh. The last. Uh. One of the last few. Uh. Dead air. This is another. Uh. Uh. Kind of. Night of the Living Dead. Imagine if it had only been set in the recording studio. 
Hmm. And it kind of had a War of the Worlds vibe where you're the guy's hearing all this noise over the air and he can't make out whether it's real or not. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a light recommendation. We'll return after these messages. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try? They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure All, sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation, we have Italian horror, we have zombies, we have slashers, we have crime films, we have spaghetti westerns, we even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails Ya. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Hey, I heard you like movies. I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. Mm -hmm. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm -hmm. Music. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the big one, music. Uh, sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yeah, yes. I am the master storyteller <laughs> yes. of the podcast realm. <laughs> Undefeated. So if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers, yes. the Google Play, yes. Apple Podcasts, what else? Podbean, what else? Podcast Addict, goddamn, all that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere, worldwide, baby. Hustle, motherfucking hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah. We gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want his hair to say, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> good fun stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> No, don't, don't run the listeners away, Pete. Ah, I'm sorry. But this is going kind of long. Yes. So we'll end this and say, hey, check out the Home Video Hustle every Friday on all the various podcast outlets. Peace. Peace. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. If you take two old punk rockers who are past their prime, put them in front of a movie screen and give them a podcast, what do you get? Cinema punks. Cinepunks. It's the mixtape of movies. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this movie. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, Prudes. I know, really. Right? 
what's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore? I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of here. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept up. Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did be a you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. It's late, it's time, let's check our cue, baby Pair it with a couple brews, baby We love your movies We love the bad ones too So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you Oh yeah Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes are gratuitous movies It's time to get busy With your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com We now continue with our program <laughs> So, but, so this Oops. one looks like... Uh, Right away, I'm looking at it right now because I've never watched it. But um, if I can call out um, Pontypool from 2008. Good, good call. So, looks like a similar kind of vibe radio station kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, a Cronenberg movie not made by Cronenberg. It's kind of that movie. <laughs> oh, so that is exactly. That is so apropos. Yeah, exactly. Not made by Cronenberg. But yeah, and very small scale. Just it takes place right in that little studio. Uh, kind of like Cell, if anyone has, has read the book or seen the movie. The movie sucked, but the book was great. Cell? Yeah, uh, Cell? yeah, Stephen King. It was a Stephen oh, King yeah. book. You yeah. know, the, the, book, actually... the book was great. The movie was awful, but it's got the same vibe as the Pontypool, sort of where words turn people into, you know, not zombies, but other, you know, crazed beings kind of thing. You know, I, 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 I hate to be the country. I actually didn't mind Cell, even though... John Cusack didn't seem to be there. No, you know what? I will. I've only watched it once. I should go back and watch it again because I love the book, and I know the movie got a bad rap. I should be fair and go back and watch it a second. You got Samuel L. Jackson and John Cusack in a movie. I'm in. You know what I mean? I'm in. Yeah, it's a 1408 reunion. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Good point. Yeah, I should go. I should be fair and go back and give it. But I uh, wanted to call out Pontypool because I think that is a great sort of a small scale. Uh, sort of zombie movie, you know, it's all in the studio. Rob's back. <laughs> oh, man, like... You missed a lot. Okay, so we're talking about Pontypool. Um, I was asking you, uh, did you, would you say Tribal Get Out Alive counts as a zombie film? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> Tribal <laughs> definitely counts. Perfect, perfect. So Pontypool and Tribal, watch them, guys. Watch Dead Air 2 if you need to. Uh, another movie that I'm really surprised to say is very enjoyable and has nothing to do with the movie it's supposedly a sequel to is the video game adaptation House of the Dead 2. Oh, it has yeah. nothing <laughs> at all to do with the first one, and yet it has a bang and rock soundtrack. It's basically a fun Aliens type movie, and Emmanuel Vajer, yeah, the original Painkiller Jane, uh, she's going around killing people. Kurt Sticky Fingers gets some hysterical lines. It it starts out as a college frat movie. It's basically Return of the Living Dead if they had made the third part but decided to actually maintain a bunch of college kids and military guys fighting zombies. <laughs> uh, but it, it takes some actual characters from uh, the video game and puts them in there. But I don't know why they bothered putting a sequel lot name on it when it doesn't even follow the storyline or non-existentness of the last one. So it's just funny. Who, who would want to? Who would want to follow anything that had to do with the first one? But yeah, Uball, you, you Ball wasn't involved with it at all. Thanks, God. 
uh, <laughs> and unlike Alone in the Dark 2, you can actually watch this and have fun with it. It it actually played at some theaters in Germany, so there you go. Um, and oh, premiered God. on Sci-Fi Channel, so it it's Alone I can't in the Dark. Stress. It's so good. It's so Poor good. Baby. Not Alone in the Dark. I'm saying House of the Dead too. But no, yeah. no, no. I was saying you mentioned Alone in the Dark too, and I was just thinking about poor Rick Hume. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Uh, now, has anyone seen 2009's French movie uh, La Horde, also known as The Horde? No. That's Heard another. I want to see it. It's definitely a Romero love letter, but made by French people. Um. <laughs> Uh, the main guy definitely reminds me of Ving Rhames in a way. So he definitely had some Ken Forey Ving Rhames to him. Uh, so does Arby's commercials? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is yeah, definitely this is definitely if he shouted in a foul mouth manner like Ving Rhames in the Arby's commercials, but didn't have the weight gain. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> to close it off, I'm going to recommend highly the zombie comedy uh, Amigo Undead with Randall Park. This comes on. This comes on Showtime quite a lot, and it's it starts off very amusing and has a outrageous zombie attack scene at a gas station. And uh, long story short, uh, basically, uh, the main here after a while it stops being a zombie movie, and the main character learns out a fucked up uh, side of his other friend, and to get his heart broken and get this betrayal after the world's gone to shit, it's pretty fucked up. So. It's just a mainly a dark comedy with some occasional zombie violence, but it's just it's an interesting movie with some good acting. Oh, you got Randall Park in it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, the, from Fresh Out the Boat. He is very surprisingly layered, which says a lot, because, I mean, it, he's definitely one of those comedians who can go there if you want him to. So. Right, right. Uh, well, that's, that's all, folks. I'm going to let us all plug it in the butt. All right. That's <laughs> Let's uh, let's put the oh god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you first. <laughs> you first. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going after that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Then just keep it going, guys. You can find him where you want to find him, whatever that means. We're <laughs> <laughs> fighting the winds. You just, you just killed the moo with the like you could have said anything but plug him in the butt. Right. <laughs> could, have, could have been anything. Anything. I'm sorry, I've been the quiet kid at school for so long. I can't now I just say what's on my mind. So <laughs> I will not be repressed no more. I got it. So fuck it, I'll go. Uh you can find me at uh Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube is Cinema Drunkie as well as my Personal blog, the cinema junkie.wordpress.com, as well as my my uh, writings and reviews on ultimateactionmovies.com, as well as actionflex.com, and uh, my upcoming podcast, The Action Junkies. So there you have it. Woo! All right, so I, I guess I'll go. Yeah. As, as ever, The Nightmare Nerd, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. Uh, as we're entering the Halloween season, I got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm also a contributor to Horror Hive and to uh, House of Tortured Souls, so keep your eyes out. Idri can be scary and enjoy. The djinn says make it so. <laughs> Ask the djinn. All right, uh, David, uh, anything uh, you're recommending or looking into? Uh, I have nothing to plug because they don't let me out of the Institute that often, but just, you know what, just... <laughs> just just be good to each other. That's all I ever got. Just be good to each other. Absolutely. Yep. Share the love in this dark world. Absolutely. Lord knows we need it. Fuck yeah, we do. Shit, I know I do. us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up-